I started my career in Fayetteville, North Carolina, for the Fayetteville Observer. Um, so I was a military reporter there, and so the rite of passage is everybody has to cover this exercise called Robin Sage. Robin Sage is the, the culmination exercise, or the final exam, if you will, for uh, Special Forces. Essentially, they go to this fictional country named Pineland, and they help the resistance there um, basically overthrow this oppressive regime. The beauty of Pineland, though, is that it, it's literally part of North Carolina. It, it is central North Carolina, and it's made up of, uh, 15, I think, 15 counties uh, and the people in those counties. And when the exercise is going on, Pineland comes to life for real. Uh, the, the police become uh, this oppressive regime. Uh, regular people become guerrilla leaders. Uh, and everyone stays in character. So when the, the students arrive, it's, it's almost jarring because they see a lot of familiar things that they, they know, like Hardee's and the United States. But yeah, everybody's talking about Pineland and, and the resistance and, and freedom and, and the need to uh, overthrow this regime. North Carolina's had this for decades. I mean, for decades they've trained Green Berets. And if you look at all the guys, all the Green Berets who went to Afghanistan in 2001 and have been fighting now for, for 12, 13 years, they were trained in Pineland. And all the guys who toppled the Taliban, you know, got those lessons in North Carolina. Hollywood has made the Green Berets into this, these killing machines, but in actuality, it's the rapport building, it's that cultural sensitivity, it's that understanding of the language and the culture so that they can then help locals become better soldiers. Basically, they're good trainers. That's really where the, the crux of what makes Special Forces special. And in Pineland, they learn those skills, or they're tested on those skills. They're tested on how to build rapport with your guerrilla chief, how to win over his trust, how to then help him uh, as an advisor. And, you know, I heard a lot of Green Berets have told me in Iraq and Afghanistan that the, feel, uh, the lessons that they learned in Pineland and, that, and those relationship building lessons, they've applied then to a warlord, say, in Afghanistan. So the exercise works because of its flexibility and because of its focus on really trying to build that, that rapport. But I always was fascinated by the people, by the Pinelanders. Uh, guys like uh, Pineland Bob out of Ashboro, who, I mean, this guy lives and breathes Pineland when he's there. He, uh, he wants to, be, uh, Pineland Bob, for example, wants to be buried with a Pineland flag in his, in his casket. Um, so to these guys, Pineland's real and it, and it means something to them. And they take great pride in, in providing the soldiers with a really accurate look at, at a resistance and a really accurate look at some of the things they're going to experience when they go to Iraq and Afghanistan. Pineland is, is unique to North Carolina. It's, it's, it's probably the most unique exercise in all of the military. Uh, they have big training areas like uh, the National Training Center out in California or the... Uh, but <laughs> nothing like Pineland. Because in Pineland, it's not, it's not a base. It's not a training center. There's no gate. There's no fence. Um, you know, you literally are living on a farm. Uh, you're literally living in the woods in a makeshift camp. Uh, you're going to the farmer and they're giving you food after you help them clean out their gutters. I mean. It's a legitimate, it's a fake resistance to a fake oppressive government, but everything works like it would if, if you really had it. And that, that is what makes Pineland so special. Every single Green Beret has been trained in, at Fort Bragg and has gone through Pineland. 